Sam Corkies from EVSC and today I'll be detailing everything you need to know about how to charge the MG4. Now this product comes in five different variants from the Excite 51 all the way out to their performance model. And we're gonna look into battery capacities, their maximum AC and DC charging speed and give you an overview of the kilometers expected in each of these products. So let's get started. So let's go over the five different variants and everything you need to know. From a battery capacity, the Excite 51, which is the base model, which I have right here right now, has a 51 kilowatt onboard battery, and that gives you 350 kilometers of range. The AC charging speed is 6.6 .6 kilowatts, and that's a seven and a half hour zero to full charge. On a DC charger, it's a 125 kilowatt maximum power. That's impressive for a vehicle of this price point. And that's a 10% to 80% charge of about 37 minutes. So you're not gonna be sitting around for too long if you drive this long distance. The next model up is the Excite 64. It's battery capacity that's usable, and that's really important to know. We're gonna claim the usable battery. It's 62.1 kilowatt hour battery. And that's a range of 450 kilometers. I like that range. Everyone who's been following our channel knows I'm a range kind of guy in Australia people like to drive. And the maximum AC charging speed here is also a single phase 6.6 .6 kilowatts, while the DC provides a 150 kilowatt maximum power. That's impressive. So on the AC charging, you're looking at about nine hours. On a fast DC uh, charger, you're looking at a 10% to 80%, which is what we're using today, of 28 minutes. So the next, level up is the Essence 64. Again, very similar here. We're looking at a 62.1 kilowatt battery, 435 kilometers of range, so slightly less than the Excite 64, but the maximum AC and DC charging speeds are the same. You're looking at a 6.6 .6 kilowatt single phase onboard system, so nine hours to fully charge, and then the DC is 150 kilowatts. Again, about a 28 minute charge from 10% to 80. Now, a very, very cool uh, model that they have is a long range. Again, people know I love a long range car, right? The biggest barrier to people buying an EV has been cost and it's been range, right? The MG solves both of those problems, especially the long range. You've got a battery that's 74.4 kilowatt hours of usable battery. That's 530 kilometers of range. That's as good as any petrol car, right? But there's some differences here on the uh, charging speeds. For an AC charging speed, this one can be 11 kilowatt three phase. So you can actually charge this car faster at home if you have three phase or in public. Uh, and that's a seven hour zero to full charge. While DC, this goes all the way up to 180 kilowatts. So again, a 10% to 80%, 38 minutes. Very, very impressive numbers from the long range product. And then the final vehicle, is what they call the MG4 X Power. Okay, so I'll quickly run through this one. It's very similar to the Excite 64. It's got a 62.1 kilowatt battery, but it's only got 400 kilometers of range because this car's more powerful. It's actually 0, 100 in 3.8 seconds. That's impressive numbers. I call this the hot hatch, you know, the GR version, the Nismo version that MG is bringing out. Uh, and that's really exciting because it's, it's, it's a true hot hatch. Um, and then of course, it's a single phase onboard system. So you're looking at about nine hours uh, charge. And of course on the DC, it's gonna take about 28 minutes if you find the right high power DC charger. Okay, and that's the five variants there. There's a lot to go through. We're putting that on the screen. Of course, always consult the MG website if you ever need exact up-to-date numbers, uh, but that's data as of 2025. So let's get into this and uh, actually plug some charges in and see what happens. So to charge the car is pretty easy. It's here on the back left. It's quite nice actually. Just press this button, pops open. And as you see, like any good EV, it's a CCS2 port. What that means is at the top is the AC charging port. It's that smaller plug head. And then if you pull this bottom section off, that exposes the DC charger. So as an easy way for you to know, a DC charger is those big kind of petrol station like EV chargers that are around in big shopping centers. Uh, for big fleets and they charge the car at the faster speed. So the top one's for the slower AC and the bottom one's for the faster DC. 
simple. So we're gonna plug in now, and MG's made it really easy with their light sequence. So light blue indicates nothing's plugged in. When I plug this in, it's gonna lock into the car and it's gonna turn blue. And when it actually starts charging, it turns green. Simple. So I highly recommend don't walk away until you know that your car's charging, both here and at the screen. All right, turns blue. And then once the process has started, that's gonna turn green. So now I'm in the car and because it's charging, it actually tells me on the screen, it tells me how much the battery percentage is at, how much time is remaining, and I can stop as well as unlock the cable here from the screen. Now that's really important. A lot of public charges, a lot of home charges, when you do plug in to stop them, you're gonna to have to come into the car and use this screen, okay? And this really is pretty simple, but it's easy to use. As always guys, um, the easiest product to buy is a portable EV charger, and that's gonna allow you to plug into a standard household Australian outlet. But as always, these are slow, these are two kilowatts. So a 50 kilowatt battery, a 70 kilowatt battery, that's 25 to 35 hours of charge. And if you're gonna be using this car realistically, it may be too slow. So what a lot of people do is they invest in a home EV charger. So a supplied and installed charger, and that allows you to charge at either seven kilowatts or 11 kilowatts if you have the right MG and three phase at home. And that really means that you can have an overnight zero to full charge. Like, it's really about how much you drive. But I say is, is when you get a home charger in, doesn't matter if you upgrade your car in the future, that charger will charge every car. And it gives you the fastest possible speeds. And for me, the best experience if you own your home is to have a home charger installed. If you need to use public infrastructure, often you'll go to a shopping center or a community center and they'll have a small AC charger. They sometimes come with a cable, but if they don't come with a cable, you'll need a type two to type two cable. And that means that you can plug into those and use that. And then the final way to plug in is when you go to the big DC chargers. These products, as you can see, they're a large size and they come with that bigger kind of CCS2 plug, which I showed you guys earlier. Uh, and these come in a range of power from 25 kilowatts all the way up to 350 kilowatts. And that's gonna determine how fast this car charges. They have a fantastic DC charging speed of between 125 to 180, depending on the model. So if you choose a fast DC charger, this is actually gonna charge even faster. And what really excites me about this car is it really targets the small car market, which EVs haven't been playing in, right? Toyota Corolla, Mazda 3s have been what people have been buying, but now they have a genuine option in the EV space that gives equivalent range, equivalent price, and lower running costs. I genuinely am excited about the small car market because it's a missing part. Fleets can transition, young people can transition, and we can generally see more EVs on the road. Yeah, get a lot of bang for buck, you get a lot of package. It's zippy, it's got great brakes, it's really easy to drive. I was actually surprised at how comfortable I was driving this car very quickly. So, I'm Sam Corkies, and on behalf of the EVSE team, if you need anything on how to charge an EV, accessories or parts, Feel free to reach out and we'll gladly support you. Bye for now.